Hey everyone, welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife. I'm so glad you're here. It is kind of a gloomy Monday here and we are going to be in the kitchen. We're actually going to be making something that uh, has to do with my Charleston trip. So um, we, before we went to Charleston, I did a little research on the Gullah Geechee culture and so forth. And I wanted to visit like a, just a solid, just only Gola Geechee restaurant. That didn't happen. I didn't get to do that. Um, so I thought, well, let's do some research. I happen to know of a chef who's on television, who is from the Gola Geechee culture heritage. And um, so I went and looked up some stuff on her site and found this recipe. I'm going to have to adapt it a little bit just because I don't have everything I need, but it's going to be very close and it's going to be delicious. So I'm going to get the broth started because we're going to doctor up a little bit of a broth. And once we do that, I'll come back and I'll share with you a little bit of the history and the knowledge that I got while we were in Charleston on the Gullah Geechee um, culture. I'm trying to see if my green light's on. Yeah, it is. So, okay, let's get started on putting this, um, just the broth. We have a lot more to do with the stew. It is, it is like a shrimp stew and um, rice was really big in the Gola culture. So we will serve it on rice, much like a gumbo or something like that. So, all right, let's um, get you turned down here. All right. And um, like I said, I don't have everything needed for this. If I had shrimp with the peel on and the tails on, we would just save the shrimp and make a seafood stock. Um, but the shrimp I was able to buy was already peeled, deveined, tail off. It was, you know, kind of done for me. Um, and I did not see any, any different types. So we're just going to make a slightly chicken broth. <laughs> We're going to put a little bit of bouillon granules in there. Not a lot, just a little bit. And then we're going to doctor it up with a few things. I had some celery that's getting a little bit flimsy. So I'm just going to cut it into thirds, just one stalk and put it in here. I've got a carrot I'm going to cut into thirds. I only had one onion left, so we're going to um, season this with granulated onion and garlic. So this is a little bit of granulated garlic going in. Let's go in with some granulated onion. Let's put a bay leaf in. And I'll stir those clumps of chicken granules out. And I'm out of salt there. Let's get some pepper. And we'll grab some salt. Hold on. Okay, we're gonna salt it pretty good. Remember that chicken bouillon has some salt in it already. I'm going to grab a fork. Give these a little stir. And we're going to get this on to simmer. We're going to let it simmer for a while. We want the flavors to just really come together. And the reason I didn't chop everything up and I left it pretty whole is it's easier to get out that way. And I can use just straight the broth and be, be done with it. So, all right, let me get this on the stove. I'll be right back. You hear some noises in the background. I have me a pot of coffee, Perkin. I did not get all my coffee in this morning, so I'm gonna have a cup of coffee. But while we were in Charleston, I wanted to learn about the Gullah Geechee history, their culture. So we went to, it's actually a, a steel working plantation and they actually have a Gola education seminar thing that goes on there every day, uh, multiple times a day. The lady who taught it is a five generation Gola Geechee. She's from that uh, lineage. And this is how they came about. Um, Charleston was a huge hub 
of the slave market when they would bring the slaves in from Africa. Um, and it's such a dark, sad time in our country's history, but it happened and we can't ignore it. But um, they would bring the slaves in from Africa and they didn't want them to communicate with each other to plan ways of escape or whatever. So they would mix tribes because tribes had different languages. So they would put somebody from this tribe with somebody from this tribe with somebody from this tribe. But they knew they needed to know how to communicate. So Gullah is actually the language that they all came up with to know how to communicate one with another. And so it became the Gullah language and Geechee became the um, kind of the culture around it. Um, they, they were the ones who knew how to work in the rice fields. They understood how to grow rice and they put Charleston on the market basically with rice. And um, so it was, it was so enlightening. And if you think you've never heard the Gullah language, or if you think you've never heard anything like that, if you remember back as a little child and hearing the song, Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya, Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya. Kumbaya is actually from the Gullah language. And I, I was so amazed when I heard that. I was just, um, that was so neat to me to know that, I, hey, I've heard the Gullah language before and didn't realize it. Um, so this is, they had their own food style. They had um, a lot of their food requires rice. Our dish will have rice. It'll be served over rice and um, a lot of okra, a lot of sweet potatoes. Now, this does not have sweet potatoes or yams in it. But um, so we we're going to we a lot of onions. So we're going to make this soup and it's going to be delicious. They also had a trade called uh, knowing how to weave baskets out of sweet grass. And uh, let me show you mine. So here is my sweet grass basket. It is absolutely beautiful. This style right here where it's solid like this. I believe they said it was called the elephant ear style. Um, you can see it is made of reed. They, they take the grass and tear it apart. And, and then they, this part has reeds and, and I don't know how they do it. It's just amazing. I watched them do it. It is absolutely beautiful. And um, my sweet friend Tammy over at Color Valley Cooks bought this for me. And while we were there, because she and I were there together, and um, I was um, tickled pink. And she she got her a matching one. So we have matching sweet grass baskets. <laughs> um, but so I was anxious to learn how to, to eat some of the food. Um, this this I, I don't want to get teared up because um, it's just a sad time in our history. And um, but I, I'm so thankful we have come so far since then. And, um, and, and I'm glad that there's people still from that heritage who is teaching those of us who are coming along what their family members went through, what they, what they brought with them, the, the knowledge that they brought. I mean, they, they brought so much to us over here in America. And so, um, um, I'm excited to try this dish um, and it, it kind of has an emotional feel to me as well. So, all right, I'm going to let bring my broth up to a bowl and then we'll turn it down to simmer and just let it hang out kind of and then we'll get ready to start. I'm thawing out. I bought frozen vegetables. Uh, I didn't go to the farmer's market to get fresh, but I did buy um, frozen Llamas, frozen corn, and frozen okra. So um, okra is a big deal too. So <laughs> anyway, all right, we'll be back when it's time to do the rest of the meal. So I have fished out the carrots and the, the celery and the bay leaf out of our broth, and I'm just going to set it aside for just a little bit. And what we're going to do now is we're going to get our onion and our bell pepper. I have about a cup of onion 
chopped and I have a, a medium sized onion chopped. And I'm gonna use about two tablespoons of butter and about two tablespoons of olive oil. And what that does is you like the butter for taste, but you wanna raise the smoke point because butter burns really easily. And so by adding oil to it, it raises the smoke point that you can get your vegetables caramelized and so forth. So I'm gonna put about two tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of butter, and we're gonna get We're gonna start out with our onions. I'm trying to do this without dropping it. And our bell pepper, we're gonna get those sauteing up first thing. And in just a little bit, we'll add in one of my frozen garlic pucks all that is is just minced up garlic, took a cookie sheet, put, I mean, took a cookie scoop, put them on a, a cookie sheet and froze them and then put them in bags and they come out of the, but we don't want that to burn. So we're going to wait a little bit before we put that in. We're going to give it a stir. And we're gonna let this saute up and get nice and soft. While that is sauteing, let's go over here to the cutting board. Okay, so I am cutting up these um, Roma tomatoes. I have three of them, you know, three or four, whatever. We're also gonna be adding in a can of diced tomatoes. And these don't have to be done in a pretty fashion because they're going to cook so you just want to get them chopped pretty good but don't worry about them being pretty it's not like going on a taco bar or anything we're actually going to cook these down finish cutting these up and I'll bring you right back. So now's a good time. They're starting to get soft, the onions and peppers, to add in our garlic um, puck. <laughs> that was such a great idea to do with garlic. Um, I have it in my freezer. All I have to do is go grab one and just drop it right in. It works wonderfully. Gonna let that cook just a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, so here we're gonna add in, uh, these are frozen vegetables, but I have thawed them. So we're gonna add in our corn. Um, the recipe actually calls for two cups, but I think this is like 12 ounces. So it's pretty close. Llamas. We're going to add in our Roma tomatoes here. We're going to give that a nice stir. And what we're going to add in now is a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes. We're going to add in our broth that we made. This was about four cups. The recipe, I believe, calls for three cups. Now remember, I will try to leave the link down below to the actual recipe where this came from. I am deviating from it just based on what I have and so forth. So you can either go by mine or go by the recipe, either one. They're gonna be delicious. 
either one. All right, so we are gonna let this cook. I'm gonna add a little salt and pepper. There we go. And while this kind of cooks a little bit and simmers and the vegetables get nice and soft, we're gonna move our attention over here to the frying pan and our shrimp. So, give me just a minute and I'll meet you over here. Okay, so over here I'm doing the same thing. I got a little bit of butter and a little bit of oil and we're just gonna add our shrimp in. I'm gonna actually move that around and salt and pepper. And we're just gonna wait till this shrimp looks like they're starting to cook. And then we'll add the okra and some ginger in here. I'm gonna add some salt right now. And then we're gonna add some pepper. I'm trying to get some in my fingers here. And we're gonna cook that until the shrimp just looks, you know, nice and pink. Found a shell. Always look your shrimp really good. Especially if you're buying like deveined, peeled and deveined. Because they sometimes leave shells on there. Unintentionally, of course, it just happens. going to use some more shrimp. Okay, that shrimp is looking really good. So I'm going to add in my okra. And I'm using two bags. I love okra. If you don't like okra, I'm sure you could leave it out and it'd be just as good. But I happen to love okra. I love vegetable soup with okra in it. Oh my goodness. Love it. Love it so much. Black. We're going to take that out. All right. Now we're going to stir this around. I'm going to season one more time with salt and pepper. You always kind of layer your seasoning. You know, do it in, if, if at all possible. All right, and to that, we're gonna add a teaspoon of ginger. And I'm really just gonna eyeball this. And yes, you're gonna see some slime because okra gets slimy when it cooks. But once we get it over into the stew, it's going to be delicious. All right, so we're gonna let that cook and we're gonna add in one more thing. Gonna add in the juice of half a lemon. just to give it a brightness. Okay, we're gonna stir this again. Now, if, if you don't wanna see this sliminess, you could probably could just put it directly into the stew. In fact, I'm really not sure why we're not, but I'm going by the recipe and it said to cook it with the shrimp separate, so we shall see. All right, let's check our stew here. Looks really good. Okay, I'm gonna go check the recipe just to be sure. Let me show you. Doesn't that look good? It almost looks like a vegetable soup, doesn't it? Um, I'm gonna go check 
my recipe, make sure there's nothing I'm leaving out or nothing that I have that I'm leaving out. And then we'll be putting the shrimp over in here and then just let it cook. And then I'll make a pot of rice in the same pot that I did the broth in. Okay guys, we are golden with the everything in here. So we're gonna add in, and I may have to do this off camera. Maybe not. We're adding in the okra and whoops, okra and shrimp. We're gonna throw our overboard pieces in. Oh my goodness, does that not look so good? All right, we're just gonna let this simmer for about 20, 10 to 20 minutes. And um, probably more like 20 because I gotta make a pot of rice. So, let me get the rice going and I'll see you back when we plate this up. I'm gonna put the lid on and just let it cook away for a little while. Okay, everyone, we have our bowl of our shrimp stew with okra. And remember, we have never made this before. So I'm going to share with you my true and honest opinion. So keep in mind, this is my opinion. And I think where my mind is going is it needs spice to it. But I want to taste it as is you know, is closely made to the recipe. And I didn't change the recipe enough to make, to, to change the actual flavor of it. I just changed the, the way we did the broth. But, um. What kind of seasoning did you have to put in it? Just salt and pepper and a bay leaf mm -hmm. and some ginger. Okay. That That's it. it. And the way it looks, I want it to be Creole, you know? Mm -hmm. Here, try. Here it comes. Look at, look at, did you show it to us? I did. It's actually, absolutely It's very gorgeous. beautiful. It's gorgeous. Very beautiful. Good color. And I just feel like it needs a kielbasa sausage and some Creole seasoning. But we're going to try it and see. Needs some more salt. Definitely needs more salt. Mm -hmm. Did you put white cod for us? Well, no, I just sprinkled. Mm -hmm. So you get measured. It's not bad. No, it's not bad. It's not bad. It just needs more salt. Mm -hmm. And I do think some Creole seasoning would kick it up. But now that would change change it from African to, but the gola is very much like the Creole, so. We're gonna give it a shot, here we go. We're gonna add some. Right. And I think it's a mental thing because it looks like gumbo. It's over rice like gumbo. And I just feel like it should, it's got okra like gumbo. Here we go. And a little bit that, of salt. That helped it in my book. All right. Let's give it a whirl, okay? You tell me what you think. Oh, yeah, that helped it. And the salt helped it, too. Yeah. I know that kind of changes things a little bit, but... It's okay. It's it's, And you can definitely add it now. Like, mm -hmm. try it as the recipe states, and then if you think it needs something season at the, the end, flavor. season, season it mm -hmm. on your ta at the table. So, right. Right, try um, right there. I added some salt. Try that. You added some salt? I'm going to get a lima bean. I didn't get a lima bean yet. Yeah. Stir, it. stir it. That's going to set my mouth on fire. As Justin Wilson would say, oh, a little dabba do ya. That's what he said, wasn't it? Yeah, something like that. Definitely better with yep. the um, Creole and salt. Yep. So, what do you think? That's good. Yeah, that's a good. That'll work. That's a good winter meal. Yeah, that'll work. Well, it's or spring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's very good. But like I said, make it as is the recipe, and I'll try to link. It's um, Cartier Brown. That's who I got the recipe from. Um, I will link it down in the description. And um, try make it as it is written, or at least closely to the way I made it. And then <clears throat> at the end, add 
what you think it needs at the end. Because I thought it needed something. I'd put more shrimp too. Yeah, I didn't. I thought I said that when I poured my shrimp up, it needs more shrimp. I put more shrimp. Yep. All right, guys. I mean, I mean the couple. Um. I don't know what I did with my recipe, but I think it was like two cups. Yep. Hey, I got a question for y'all. <clears throat> Do you want to know why firemen wear red suspenders? Have you told them that? No. Firemen wear red suspenders to hold their pants up. No. Yeah. Who knew? I can't do anything with him. Who knew? Yeah. He's out of my hands. Yep. Hope you guys like that one. All right, guys. Well, be sure to give this, um, I call it shrimp stew with okra, or you can call it okra stew with shrimp, whatever. But um, I will link her recipe down below, and then just remember, season it when you when you taste it at the end. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Oh, we got a good collab coming up. We got um, I'm gonna be making something I've never made before, and it's kind of a technical dessert. And so we're gonna see if I can do it or not. So, all right, stay tuned. That'll be Thursday's video. We'll see you then. And remember, if the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. Bye, y'all.